Hello, I'm Mal and welcome to another episode of Mini Model Makes. In today's episode I'm going to go through the uh, Reaper Dark Heaven Bones Graveyard Golem Miniature. So this is a new one for me, this is my first Reaper miniature I'm seriously going to review. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to tag on a painting guide to this as well. So as well as this little unboxing there's going to be a painting guide on, on how I've painted it up. I've bought this as my family are doing a D&D campaign with me and I'm going to do a special one-off campaign for Halloween which is coming up in about a month's time at the end of October and this is going to be one of the big bads that I'm going to use at the end of the campaign. I picked this up online, I picked it up from eBay, it cost me $7.99 and I got it from MG underscore products so check them out, they sell quite a lot of Reaper Bones miniatures. So without further ado, I'm going to get my overhead cam set up, I'll unbox this, go through the parts and then after that I'll do the painting guide. What I will also try to do at the end of the video is pop this up when it's painted onto a little turntable so you get a better look at it as well. I'll crack on, bye for now. Graveyard Golem, Dark Heaven, Bones. So it's Reaper miniature, looking forward to opening this up. As I said on my intro, I obtained this from MG underscore products on eBay, it cost me $7.99 here in the UK, free post, that's including postage, which is good. So opening up the pack, and this is the first Reaper Bones miniature that I've seen, which has got multiple parts. So, we have... The body of the golem itself, quite a nice sculpt, it's been made from all the monuments and tombstones that you'd find in a graveyard, it's got sort of little cherub faces and other bits and pieces on it, and a stone gargoyle there on the shoulder, nice solid earthen base as well for it. Then we have one arm which includes another monument which is sort of like a bit looks like a bit of a shield. Uh, it's only going to go one way if you look at the fittings on the actual model. There's a little lug there which means it has to go on like that. And exactly the same on the other arm. Quite a big flash line there. I'm going to have to take that off. Same again, that arm is going there. I mean, you, you'll be able to trim bits out of it and make it fit a bit differently, I'm sure. But I'll, I'm just going to leave it be. And then what we have is the. I'll just pop that to the side. We've got sort of the iron gates of the graveyard here and they slot into the back of the model sort of acting as wings quite sort of soft and malleable they looks like they can go in either way but there is only supposedly one way for them to go to be like that, so be careful if you're putting these parts in. That'll be the gates on the back, sort of acting as wings. And that will be the model when it's, I'll, I'm going to super glue it together in a moment. I'll probably leave the gate parts off the back because I'll be doing them a slightly different colour when I paint up. But that's it. Quite a nice miniature. Nice detail. I think it's going to be amazing as as a big hulking bad to, to go at the end of my D&D Halloween one-off campaign in which I'm looking at a necromancer attacking an inn full of people which is handily for the necromancer next to a graveyard so he can use his magic to resurrect loads of bits and pieces 
and sort of lay siege to the tavern that our adventurers and other NPCs will be in. But well, that's it. What I will do now is I'm going to set up my little painting table and I'm going to give this a spray. It does say with the Reaper miniatures that undercoat is no priming necessary. So I'm not going to use an undercoat but I am going to give it a spray with some Citadel Canicus Grey spray as a base coat on it once I've trimmed these. Uh, well there's only sort of one big mould line on it which is good. I'm going to give that a trim. Alright so I'll see you shortly with a base coated model. So the first thing I've done is with the gate sections I've used some masking tape, little Tamiya masking tape to cover over the stone plinths or the, the, the stone gate posts section to leave me just with the actual iron gate itself to make the gate look even old and more weathered what I'm going to do is I'm going to base coat the gate section to begin with with uh, or undercoat um, using colour primer leather brown which is from the army painter as previously mentioned I'm going to do everything else in uh, Citadel spray which is the Mechanicus standard grey so for the first stage I'm going to have these gates here which form the sort of wings at the back of the constructs and I'm just going to make sure that the gates are nice and brown and I've not missed any spots with my spray so I'm going to use Citadel Mumfang Brown mix it up on my palette and just get it into all the nooks and crannies of the model this uh, resin that Reaper uses, it's sort of softer than the, the hard plastic that Citadel use for their model, Games Workshop use for their models, and the resin that's used in things like War Machine. So I'm just going to make sure everything's covered in a nice coating of brown on these gates. What I'll do now is I'll do both of these gates and move on to the next step. Whilst the gates are drying there at the top of the picture I'm going to get some Citadel Rakarth flesh. Pop some on my palette and then I'm just going to dry brush. So I'm popping most of my excess onto a piece of paper. And then I'm going to pick out certain parts of the model. It's almost sort of stippling on in the Rakarth flesh to simulate different parts of stone. You don't have to wipe too much off the brush. You, you can leave it, you know, sort of on quite sort of heavy ish. And then I'll stipple it on, so I'm going to go for things like the angel here, uh, probably the sort of cherub face there, and pick out a few stones just around the model, just to sort of simulate, you know, not all stone is the same, it's different shades, it's... It's not just all grey either, so you, you can use whites instead of a Rakarth if you wanted. You can use darker greys to sort of simulate granite. So this is kind of acting like a shield for the model. Sort of stippling, dry brushing it quite heavily on. Not too bothered because I'm going to put a wash over it shortly. Anyway, 
So I'm going to pick out a few more of these areas on the model and we'll move on to the next step. As I mentioned I'm going to do some dark areas as well so for this I am going to use Skaven Blight Dinge same technique as with the Rakarth I'm going to pick out a few areas of the model so for this one I'm going to do the cross which is his hand and then just pick out another few areas of the model some on his foot there and I'll do some of the stones on this arm same again doing that sort of dapple dry brush technique just to break it up a little bit there we go and I might do this gargoyle on the top of his shoulder too that's it so this just breaks up a few of the areas gives it the model a bit of definition and it's just a bit more than a straight grey and dry brush I'll move on to the next stage so the next step is going to be where the magic really starts to come in with this model and this is where we start to weather it make it look old make it look like it's assembled from parts of a cemetery and tombstones and walls and gates and things so I'm going to get two shades Agrax earth shade and a Thonian camo shade what I am going to do is pop these onto my palette so that's my Agrax there give that a wash that brush get my Thonian camo shade and I'm just going to pop that in the opposite corner on our model just start dabbing the shade all over the model so there's some Thonian camo shade you don't have to wash your brush between stages for this and then the Agrax going in and some of it sort of overlapping some of it not back to our camo shade that goes over the top of the model there Agrax overlapping there and we're just going to pop this all over our model don't have to be too neat with this which is good because we're really giving it that aged sort of moss covered appearance I am going to carry on and just finish off all the areas of this model and get back to you shortly. For our next stage now I am going to use Citadel Layer Dawnstone and this is going to be a dry brush over the grey areas of the model. I'm going to try and leave the lighter areas of stone alone. You see all the wash has now dried quite nicely it's given it sort of a natural 
effect there. Look like old tombstones, old things you'd find in a cemetery. I'll get some Dawnstone and using our tissue paper, I'm going to make sure I wipe most of that off our dry brush and then making sure nicely in shot. On this gently and quickly over the grey areas. It's really worth being patient with this. I know it doesn't seem to make sense wiping nearly all the paint that you're using off but you don't want to ruin it by having too much on just want it to catch the raised areas if you get a little bit on the um, paler areas it doesn't matter too much but just do your best to avoid them a little bit as you see without much effort we're starting to get the effect that we're looking for. With the stone on this model, which is really good. So I'm going to carry on with that stage and I'll get back to you. All right. We've finished our dry brush of Dawnstone. That's now done on the model and started bringing out a highlight. The next stage now I am going to use some Citadel Screaming Skull and this is once again a dry brush and this is going over all of our model as before make sure with this dry brush we've not got much on the actual brush itself because we don't want too much for this very fine layer that's it and then we can run this very quickly over all areas of our model now really works to bring the whole model together with all the dry brushing on this it works to be or pays to be methodical so first of all I'm going to make sure this arm is done missed out any part of it difficult to get to the inside in there to the arm I'll work across the body likewise with the back and the other arms so I'm going to carry on with that stage and I'll meet you at the next point so that's our final dry brush of Screaming Skull done 
as you can see it's really starting to take effect now that's the actual body of the model pretty much done and dusted really does make it stand out so what I'm going to do now is work on some of the detail of the model and the base as well so we want to make our base stand out from all the grey so I'm going to be painting it a brown colour and I'm going to use Rhinoxide water it down on our palette, always use your palette helps you control your paint use the actual base of the model there and just go in to paint all around the stones and the edge of the base these Reaper models they come on a moulded base which is really good you don't have to worry about putting sand or any kind of basing material down on it and as well as the actual base itself so I may need a couple of coats of this because I'm doing it nice and thin the bottom of the model you can see it's got little skulls I'm trying to get it in shot sorry little skulls in there and there's a few dotted around the model itself on top some bones here as well I'm going to paint those in the brown too because I want to really pick that they're going to add a different colour to all this stone so they're going to really stand out and help the model look more than just grey that's my dogs going wild because there's someone at the door so <laughs> I'm going to finish off this base now and all these details and skulls and then I'll get back to you on that next stage so while the base of the main model is drying I'm just going to show you now the gates that go onto his back I've done the gate posts in exactly the same way as the actual model itself but I want to work now on some sort of dark rusted iron for the actual gate and railing sections so this is a bit of an experiment what I'm going to use is Army Painter Gunmetal. I'm going to pop some of that onto my palette. Now, that is going to be too bright and clean for my liking. So, I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, Vallejo Model Air. But it's a metallic black. And I'm just going to put a little drop into our... Uh, metal I might just put one more in just to bring it down and make it a bit darker I think that's looking alright there and then with that once more it's dry brushing so I don't need to water down the paint I just need to get most of it off the brush again we're going to get our gate section and run it very quickly and roughly over the railing sections it doesn't matter if you leave some of the brown coming through because it's actually sort of looking rusted and weathered because of that which is quite good this um, resin is really soft hard to dry brush these gate sections try and make sure the points are really nicely done and that I've got the underneath of these sections so once more I'm just going to work on these make sure I've got the coverage that I need 
and I'll get back to you on the next stage for them. But that's how they're looking at the moment. So our two gate sections have dried with that mix. The two metals I've put on there. What I'm now going to do is give this a, a faint dry brush with Citadel Iron Breaker. Coming to the end of it, this pot, it's really looking its age. Once more, dry brush. So pop our paper down. Get the majority of it off the brush you, you don't want a lot for this get our gate sections and start working on the spikes and the edges and put them side by side so you can see the difference in the stages just picking out those edges just popping that little bit more so our next stage with these gates is to bring the colours back down again a bit of definition so I'm going to give it a wash we are using Citadel Agrax Earthshade which is by far the best shade that Citadel do. It's literally li liquid talent in a pot and just gonna run it over these areas try and sort of wipe it off the flatter areas I'm trying to leave it you know around the studs that are in the gate where it meets the gate post there put a little bit back onto especially the underneath of the spikes make them stand out again give them a bit of definition I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side now it's almost like a pin wash around those areas the underneath of the spikes where these cross pieces meet the upright areas and where the bars go through this one as well underneath there. Done that one, go and do the other one and then I'll get back to you. Our next stage is to use Citadel Dry Necron Compound. This is going to be a really faint dry brush. If no one's ever used the dry paints, they're actually sort of almost rubbery, they're not very liquid whatsoever. You just get a little bit onto your brush, same again. We want to make sure we're wiping lots of this off. We do not want a heavy dry brush with this Necron compound. And then what I would like to do with this is just pick out some of the angled areas like the top of the spikes. The curled part of the gate. I'm going to pick out this link section where everything's raised. Now with this Necron compound, less is more. So you don't want to go too mad. We're just picking out the very finest edges on there.
I'll carry on with these two sections and then I'll get on to the next stage. So that's our Necron compound dry. The good thing with the dry brushing and these dry paints is it doesn't take long for them to be dry. You're not waiting very long on that stage. And then what we are going to do now is just add a few more technical effects to the gate to make, I mean it is already looking sort of quite old and weathered and rusty but we're just going to add a few more things so the next stage I'm going to use a little bit of the technical paint Typhus Corrosion and pops, pop it on the palette what I want to achieve with this is I'm looking at the areas sort of around where the hinges would be you know as if they've been sort of smeared with grease just left to their own devices. You can also do with this typhus corrosion is around where you've pin washed the little bolts and things you can give it a bit of a touch up and where some of these links are same on this side try and get it a bit more in shot for you Let's say less is more again with this just trying to be a bit selective of where I'm putting the corrosion that's it around there do exactly the same with the other gate and we'll move on to our next stage. So that's the typhus corrosion on around there now. The next stage I'm just going to help sort of rust it a little bit more. The, the brown base coat we used on the gates really works effectively with these already which is good but I'm going to use a little bit of the Citadel Dry Riser Rust paint now and it's the same I really can't stress how less is more with this. This is bright orange paint, so you do not want a lot of it on your brush. You see sort of how much I've wiped off on the cloth there, just to get an idea. And then we get our gate sections. Same again, just little dry brushes and dabs. around the sections there of the gate you can see you, you're getting that sort of rust it's not the best rust effect in the world there are methods with oil paints and streaking and, and there's, there's a lot of different paints out on the market but for the fact that it's a couple of quid and available in a lot of hobby shops and takes little to no effort this rise of rust isn't bad especially for beginners I'm just going to put some more on my brush. Really go to town wiping it off because it is such a strong orange colour. You've got to be careful with it. So you don't sort of want it to be looking like you've just daubed orange paint on. You want it to really look like it is rust starting to take hold that's the kind of effect that we're looking for with this so I'm going to put the two gates side by side and you can see the difference now with that right just that little sort of smattering of riser rust on it it does make it look 
more weathered kind of what we're looking for with these gates and that's it so I'm going to do the other gate now finish that off and we'll move on so our gate sections are now finished we can move back onto the base of our graveyard golem and I'm going to be using Rakarth flesh again it's another dry brush lots of dry brushing in this video I'm going to make sure it's mainly off the brush I'm using an old small brush so I can really get into the sections on the base and just very lightly going over the detail and base area of the model so I'm going to carry on with that and we'll move on to the next stage shortly so our next step now is to pick out some more of the detail around the model and on the base which is all the skulls and bones that come with this model so what I am going to use now is some Citadel U Shabti bone I am going to mix some of that onto my palette add water try and get my palette in I'm adding water to it So that's got a nice consistency and I'm going to be in control of the brush using a smaller brush and I'm picking out the skulls so as you can see there is a skull in his foot there and then there are also some skulls on top of the model. Now I'm going to paint these some bones here on the shoulder as well, another skull. I'm going to paint these up to white just to make them stand out, give this model some different colours to look at because the majority of it is greys. So I just want to make it pop a little bit more. So I'll just paint all these skulls in. What I'm actually going to use this model for is um, it's uh, going to be a Halloween themed game for my family where they're going to be in a tavern and a necromancer wants a magical item that, that the tavern owner has so he attacks the tavern, so there's going to be loads of skeletons and zombies and things to begin with all trying to force their way in and my characters and some NPCs are going to be then defending the tavern hopefully, hope they don't try and you know broker a deal or anything with the necromancer and go evil and I'm going to use this graveyard golem as sort of the big bad at the end that the necromancer summons up to defend him when he's run out of all his skeletons and things so I'm going to use him very much like the stats for a stone golem because there's no graveyard golem in the monster manual at least not that I've seen so yeah it's going to be a, a stone golem have all the stats for that because it kind of fits really nicely but I'm also going to sort of make him a bit graveyard themed so it's going to be resistant to things like necrotic magic as well. So I'm going to pick more of those out, give him a couple of coats because it's quite thin and I'll get on to the next stage. So we're now going to shade in those skulls once more, it's good old Agrax Earth Shade. So I'm on palette to control it and I'm just going to pick out the skulls and bones all around the model. Don't forget the big rib cage section which is on his leg here. So I'm going to finish that off and then it will be the next stage. Final stage now is to pick out those bones. I'm going to use Pallid Witch Flesh now for this. I would normally use Screaming Skull for skeletons but I use Screaming Skull to dry brush the stone areas so I just want to make the skull stand out a bit more I'm trying to give the model more colour more things to draw your eye to them so I'm going for a very bleached 
bones look. Just take the wings back off because I've not glued them on yet. So we've got the skull up here, just using a small brush and picking out the raised areas of the model. Same with the bones here, just on the brush very finely along them. Same with all the little ones on his base. Got a bone there and then concentrate more on the the raised areas of the skull if you can. So I'll pick out all the rest of those now and that will be our model finished by gluing the gates onto his back. So the skulls are all picked out, finished off and that is our completed graveyard golem. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see him. Pop him onto my little turntable and you can get a proper look at him then. But that's it, really quick, really effective paint scheme. Took me less than a day to do and looking forward to using him in my game with my family. I think he'll be a pretty cool model to use and hopefully they'll appreciate it. All right, I'll get that turntable set up and I'll wrap up the video. So that's our review and painting guide for the Reaper Miniatures Graveyard Golem. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe and share. I'm only a small channel, so it'd be amazing if you could do that for me. It'd help me out tremendously. Spread the word a little bit. And that's it for now. I also have a Facebook page, so you can join me there at Mini Model Makes. Please check that out as well. Bye for now and take care.